I ran track in college. <laughs> which might not seem like a big deal from where you're sitting. But when I'd walk out to start an event, everyone could see the odds were against me. At five foot one, I was nearly a foot shorter than most of my competition. In short distance events, where every inch counts, I was at a clear disadvantage. So when I decided to long jump, of all things, everyone from my parents to my coaches thought it was ridiculous but I took that doubt as a challenge. I made a point to train to go as fast and as far as I could. My hard work paid off because I ended up breaking the indoor and the outdoor long jump records. Both of those records still stand, along with a lot of the other 14, I said. Now, I was also a computer science major, and while I wasn't outmatched in the classroom, it was made abundantly clear that I looked out of place there, too. I was asked more than once by both peers and professors if I was in the right place. As a society, we have a problem with expectations. We've done a really great job at telling the younger generations to follow your dreams, do what makes you happy, follow your heart, right? but we never taught them how. Instead, we taught them that college is the answer to every question. How will I get that dream job? College. How will I lift myself out of poverty? College. And for some people, that's true, but we know it's not always the case. And when someone doesn't have the time or ability or resources, to enter a four-year college at the right time, it can end up feeling like they've completely missed their chance for success. Meanwhile, technology is leaping forward at speeds that typical academic curricula can't match. How can it be possible that both college graduation rates and unfilled job openings are both at record-breaking highs? That seems counterintuitive but it's true. If we're talking about the tech industry alone, currently more than a third of employers have unfilled job openings. Median salaries for IT occupations are nearly $40,000 higher than most non-IT occupations, yet employers simply can't find candidates to take these jobs. Part of the problem is that many employers require a four-year degree without evaluating if it's actually necessary for the job. As a result, students are often going into college out of obligation with no real way to foot their tuition bills and without preparing for or training for any specific long-term goals. Did you know that over a quarter of trained, skilled professionals without a four-year degree earn more than peers who have them? The way we teach people how to be prepared for work, for life, is not keeping up with the times. Traditional secondary education is one path, but it's clearly not meeting every need. Worse, it leaves behind many capable employees who didn't or couldn't go in that direction. So how do we adjust to the modern job market? How do we find success beyond the class ceiling that so many young people find themselves under? How do we help adults get into fields that they didn't see as attainable? How and where do we even start? Actual skill and trade programs, certification courses, apprenticeships. You see, our educational systems might be well-intentioned, but they are incredibly misaligned. The focus has shifted too far towards college prep, and too far away from technical skill attainment. Major companies like IBM, Amazon, and Microsoft have begun investing in apprenticeship programs for their own employees, paying workers while they train for IT-related jobs. For proactive individuals that you know, want to get this kind of training on their own, for-profit academies offer certification courses, but they also require thousands of dollars in fees. 
Both of these models provide a framework for increasing the number of qualified tech employees, but each have their own barriers to entry. And I believe we've created far too many barriers already. So what if we spent more time classifying people by their potential rather than their demographics? What if we recognize that in order to get certified in information technology or computer science skills, you didn't need a four-year education or prior industry background? What if you could enter the technology workforce with 10th grade English and math skills, a strong work ethic, drive, and energy, and only $100? Memphis is in a distinct position to answer these questions. We're recognized as the most philanthropic city in America. Business Insider claims us as the top city to start your career, so we know we have generous, thoughtful residents and thriving businesses. And like the national trends, we have too many open tech jobs and not enough candidates. On the other hand, Memphis has some of the most dramatic disparities in the country when it comes to income and employment. In a majority black city, black workers have a median wage 30% lower than their white counterparts. Among workers of color, fewer than half earn at least $15 an hour. These levels have not changed since 1980, but the world has. In a city where only 29% of adults hold a bachelor's degree, we know we can't count on the four-year model to meet the job needs of today. I moved to Memphis in 2015 and became a lead instructor with Tech 901. We're a nonprofit organization that trains for computer science and information technology jobs. Through this work, I've seen how expanding the tech workforce can be done in an accessible, approachable, equitable way. How? Well, one, first, be flexible. We offer both day and evening schedules so students can come during normal school hours or after work. Second, be affordable. Our most expensive course is $250. Lastly, follow through. Job coaching, resume prep, and networking should all be a part of the coursework. Although Tech 901 is based on a philanthropic model, this doesn't mean we rely on selfless handouts. We've proven that our work has far-reaching benefits and local companies know they can rely on the quality of our graduates. As an instructor, I see how this completely changes how my students approach the workforce. I've seen an office manager come to us to apply for a job and end up leaving with a registration for our coding class. She's now certified and has a position in a coding position at ServiceMaster. I've seen a sales professional at a national company use his certification to get a promotion and redirect into the higher paying fields of engineering. A recently placed graduate said that her whole world had been opened up by this program. Now, if we're being completely transparent, I think we can all agree that IT doesn't have a great track record for inclusion. But in Memphis, I see students of all ages, genders, backgrounds, and races arrive at our crosstown doors with curiosity and disbelief and leave with confidence, better opportunities, and a changed future. These stories, as well as these results, can be replicated over and over again. I went from being told that I didn't belong in a computer science classroom to teaching in one. I know the value of challenging the norm. The organization I'm part of found a Memphis-inspired solution to the tech shortage, but this model can be applied anywhere there's demand for IT jobs, a driven potential workforce, and the vision to solve the problem. We have all the tools we need. It's time to break the class ceiling. Thank you. <laughs>